The old believers split from the Russian Orthodox Church in the 17th century because of reforms the patriarch imposed. That and a changing political landscape forced many to flee the country. With the arrival of communism, at first it was fine, but then they just started coming to the huts and taking everything. Our people were used to having big families, the same as we do now. But you need to feed the kids, and they just come in and take everything. The potatoes for planting from the cellar or anything else. They just got there and took it in their bags. And people had kids. Mothers were crying. How are we supposed to feed the kids? And they go, throw the kids to the dogs. They'll eat them. Fearing arrest, the old believers fled across the border to China, where they made their living hunting. I was born in China. We lived there for a while, and then life turned bad again with the communists. Our parents escaped from communists, ran from Russia to China, and then we left China for the same reason, went to Brazil, and from Brazil to Oregon. Part of the community settled in Oregon. Others went on to Alaska, the last frontier. At that time, the Fefalo family had already had seven kids. Four more were born in Alaska. We took the kids to the mountains to save Jesus' faith. Because kids are kids, they go wandering around town, and the fishing was good to make a living. It was all desert here. We started all of it. And then the Americans began coming over. They like it here. It's quiet. Very few people, not many cars. In Alaska, they still pray in an ancient language, Old Church Slavonic. But the younger generation prefers English. Our kids speak Russian well. We spoke good Russian in the family, but their kids do not speak Russian. They come to the grandma and they can't tell me what they need. It's hard. It's such a pity for the grandchildren. Now, when they finish praying, father starts reading them stories, all in American, because the kids don't understand a word. Some 300 people live in the village. Men make their living fishing, occasionally building fishing boats that once made Nikolaevsk famous. We've built over 100 boats, and now the boats are barely worn out. They stay functional. Instead of ordering new ones, people just sell them on. But we still build some. Women in Nikolaevsk wear sarafan, traditional Russian dresses that they sew themselves. The men have beards and wear Russian shirts. None of this seems strange to people in the neighboring towns. We are here for 40 years. Maybe some tourists that visit think it's weird clothes, but the local people, they know us. Born in Brazil, Denis Fefelov came to the U.S. when he was three years old. He is the son of the Old Believers late priest, Konrad Fefelov. Denis teaches children church songs. He speaks fluent Russian as well as Old Church Slavonic, but he watches the evening news in English. There is no hesitation when asked his nationality. American, American of course. <laughs> In Mother Irina's house, there is a bookshelf filled with church books, some copied by hand by her late husband. One corner is adorned with religious icons, embroidered towels and needlework. And there is a portrait of a former American president, John F. Kennedy. Natasha Mosgovaya, Alexander Bergen, VOA News, Nikolaevsk, Alaska.